hello dear student today let us study chapter number 8 of your civic subject the name of the topic is rural livelihood rural means villages boys livelihoods necessities of life in the first chapter we look at the many kinds of diversity in our lives was in our first chapter book we have learned we look here the many kinds of diversity diversity means diverse or variety in our lives we also explored how living in different regions has an effect on the work people do the kinds of plants trees crops or things that become important to them we explored explored means uh, travel through in order to learn about it so we have learned how living in different regions has an effect on the work people do the kinds of plants trees crops or things that become important to them in this chapter we will look at the different ways in which people earn their uh, living in villages so in this very chapter children we are going to uh, read about that means uh, different ways in which people earn their living especially in the village and here too as in the first two chapters we will examine whether people have equal opportunities to earn a living we will look at the similarities in their life situations and the problems that they face so this chapter is focused here that means in this very chapter about the similarities in their life situations and the problems that they are facing so now let us start chapter kalpattu village it is the name of a village you see kalpattu is a village that's close to the shi coast in tamil nadu people here do many kinds of work as in other villages here too there is non farm work such as making baskets utensils pots brick bullock carts etc so children we find this kalpattu village is uh, located to the shi coast in tamil nadu state here in this very village people do many kinds of work as in other villages here too there is non farm work such as making basket utensils pots bricks bullock carts etc so these are not related with the farming work so people of that area they used to do this work there are people who provide services such as blacksmiths nurses teachers washermen weavers barbers cycle repair mechanics and so on so there are people apart from that means you see a non farm work for farming there are uh, several people who provide services to the people they are blacksmith nurses teachers washermen weavers barbers cycle repair mechanics and so on like this okay are there also there there are also some shopkeepers and traders in the main street which looks like a bazaar you will find a variety of small shops such as tea shops grocery shops barber shops a cloth shop a tailor and two fertilizer 
and seed shops boys that village you see here are also some shopkeepers and traders traders person who used to do big business trading like that in the main street which looks like a bazaar like a market it looks you will find a variety of small shops here you will find in the bazaar a variety of small shops are there such as tea shops grocery shops barber shops a cloth shop a tailor and two fertilizer and seed shops is also you can find there there are four tea shops which sell tiffin such as idli dosa and upma in the morning and snacks like vadai bonda and mysore pak in the evening so there are four tea shops which sell a tiffin the tiffin such as idli dosa and upma in the morning and snacks such as vadai bonda and mysore pak in the evening so the snacks also like vada bonda and mysore pak bonda it is south indian potato snack boys and then mysore pak it is an indian sweet prepared in ghee near the tea shops in a corner lives a blacksmith family whose home serves as their workshop so near the tea shop there is a corner there is a shop lives a blacksmith who used to do iron work person who used to do the work of iron that person is known as blacksmith the blacksmith family whose home serves as their workshop so they used to do work in their own home next to their home is a cycle hire and repair shop two families earn a living by washing clothes there are some people who go to the nearby town to work as construction workers and lorry drivers so you can observe here what that means different types of work they were doing there and some people who go to the nearby town in order to work as construction work and lorry drivers the village is surrounded by low hills paddy is the main crop that is grown in irrigated lands so kalpattu it is surrounded by low hills and paddy or from which we get rice boys paddy is the main crop that is grown in irrigated lands irrigated lands means those lands where are uh, water used to supply for growing crops here in this picture also you can see how that means this cultivator they are transplanting paddy plant so paddy is the main crop that is grown in irrigated lands most of the families are a living through agriculture so most of the families of kalpattu they earn their livelihood with the help of agriculture there are some coconut groves around cotton sugarcane and plantation are i mean uh let's see again there are some coconut groves around so in that village there are some coconut plants also there cotton sugarcane and plantain are also grown and there are mango orchards 
let us now meet some people who work in the fields in Kalpattu and see what we can learn about farming from them. So boys, different types of trees as mentioned and then now let us meet some people who work in the fields in Kalpattu and see what we can learn about farming from these people. Tulasi, all of us here work on Ramalingam's land. Tulasi is the name of the lady. So, she said, all of us here work on Ramalingam's land. So, the land owner is Ramalingam boy. He has 20 acres of land, paddy fields in Kalpattu. Mark this. Okay. See 20 acres of paddy field. You mark it, boys. So Ramalingam has 20 acres of paddy field in Kalpattu. Even before I was married, I used to work on paddy fields in my parental village. So when she, she said, before her marriage, when she was at her parental village, here also she used to work in paddy fields. I worked from 8.30 in the morning till 4.30 in the evening. And Karuthama, Ramalingam's wife, supervises us. So, she said she used to do the work of this uh, cultivation from 8.30 of morning till 4.30 of afternoon. And boys, Karuthama, she is Ramalingam's wife who used to supervise us, who, who used to look after the work of those who are, that means, working in the field. This is one of the few times in the year that I find regular work. Now, I am transplanting the paddy when the plants have grown. A bit Ramalingam will call us again for weeding and then finally once again for the harvesting. So children, moreover she said, this is one of the few times in the year that Tulashi find regular work. Now I am transplanting the paddy. When the plants have grown a bit, Ramalingam will call us again for weeding and then finally once again for the harvesting. So now that means she said they are transplanting the paddy. They are planting, you see, here in the picture also you can see. Here in the picture you can see that means they are transplanting uh, the paddy plants, boys. So moreover she said. When the plant have grown a bit, okay, when it becomes uh, a bit higher, at the time Ramalingam will call them again for weeding. Weeding means uh, to remove unwanted plants from crops. Okay, uh, the bushes or grasses, okay, unwanted, they are unwanted, they are not necessary. So, in order to uproot them, or take out all these uh, unwanted plants, Ramalingam will call them again and then finally once again for the harvesting and at last they will call by Ramalingam for cutting this paddy plant which is known as harvesting. When I was young I could do this work with no difficulty but now as I grow older I find bending for long hours with my feet in water very painful. So, so let's just say, she was, uh, when she was young, she could do the work of field. You see, transplanting, harvesting, weeding, this thing. Okay, uh, do this work with no difficulty. As she grow older, so 
So she find bending for long hours in order to transplant or harvest or weeding boys. We need to bend our backbone. We need to uh, be long. That means back here. Uh, we need to stay in the field for a long time and it becomes very painful okay to do work ramalingam pays rupees 40 per day this is a little less than what laborers get in my home village but i come here because i can depend on him to call me whenever there is work see uh, Ramalingam, the landowner, used to pay rupees 40 per day to those workers, and this is a, a little less than what a laborers get in her home village. But I come here because I can depend on him, so it is little less. She used to come there, it is because of she can depend on him to call her whenever there is work unlike others he does not go looking for cheaper labor from other villages so unlike other land owner he do not do any that means monopoly with those worker okay and he do not think about to Search cheaper labor. So she said, Ramalingam does not go looking for cheaper labor from other villages. My husband, Raman, is also a laborer. He also used to do work. Okay. So his name is Raman. Raman, the husband of Tulashi. We don't own any land. They do not have any land of their own. During this time of the year, he sprays pesticide. Pesticide, it is a chemical which is used by our cultivator in order to kill pests and germs of crops, in order to sap crops. So, it was his work, okay? It was Raman's work. When there is no work on the farm, he finds work outside either loading sand from the river or stone from the quarry nearby so when there is no any farm work her husband Raman used to find other work of outside either loading sand from the river or stone from the quarry nearby this is sent by truck to be used in nearby towns to make houses and this sand and stone. This is sent by truck uh, in order to be used in nearby towns for making houses. Apart from working on the land, I do all the tasks at home. I cook food for my family, clean the house and wash clothes. So, apart from her, I mean, work, working on the land, moreover than this, she used to do all the tasks, all the work at home, all domestic work she used to do at home. She used to cook food for her family and uh, clean the house and wash clothes. I go with other women to the nearby forest to collect firewood. About one kilometer away, we have a village, borewell from where I fetch water. See how that means. She used to spend her life. She used to go with other women to the nearby forest in order to collect or bring firewood, which she used for cooking. About one kilometer away, we have a village borewell 
so about one kilometer see how far it is from their house up to there she went in order to fetch water in order to bring water from the air my husband helps in getting materials such as groceries for the house and her husband raman he used to help in getting materials such as groceries groceries means food and household goods which are necessary for the family so raman used to go for purchasing that our school going daughters are the joy of our lives last year one of them fell ill and had to be taken to the hospital in town so here we find um, their school going daughters are the joy of their lives and last year one of their daughter fell ill at the time the daughter need to be taken to the hospital in town to make her cure we had to sell our cow to pay back the money we borrowed from ramalingam for her treatment so they had to sell their cow in order to pay back the money which they borrowed from ramalingam for their daughter's treatment boys uh, you will find some questions as given in this page okay and uh, i think that means some important questions answer i have already sent to you you must learn all those as you show in tulashi's story poor families in rural areas often spend a lot of time every day collecting firewood getting water and grazing their cattle as you show was in tulashi's story poor families in the village areas they always spend a lot of their time every day for collecting firewood getting water and grazing their cattle such as cow goat buffalo etc even though they do not earn any money from these activities they have to do them for the household so these activities you see as they do not provide any money but they have to fulfill those those work for the household the family needs to spend time doing this as they are not able to survive on the little money they earn family they needs to spend time doing this thing okay as they are not able to survive on the little money whatever they earn nearly 2/5 of all rural families are agricultural laborers in our country boys in our india nearly 2/5 come on mark this one also nearly 2/5 of all rural families all villages families they are agricultural laborers in our india even here in our manipur so you can see boys there are some who have small plots of land while others like tulashi are landless there are some of who, who have small land small plots of land while others like tulashi they are landless they are not having any land and less means having no land not being able to earn money throughout the year forces people in many rural areas to travel long distances in search of work this travel or migration takes place during particular seasons not being able to earn money as and when they are not getting any that means uh, any work they have to earn money throughout the year forces people in many rural areas to travel long distances they are people as and when they are not getting any work for their livelihood they are bound uh to travel long distances they have to go far distances for searching work 
This travel or migration takes place during particular season. So this type of traveling or migration it takes, it takes place during specific season. Shaker. We have to carry this paddy to our house. My family has just finished harvesting our field. So shaker is the name of a person. Right. We have to carry this paddy to our house. My family has just finished harvesting our field. So Shekhar's family just they have finished to harvest their field. We don't own much land, only two acres. We manage to do all the work on our own. At times, especially during the harvest, I take the help of other small farmers and in turn help them harvest their field. See boys. Uh, Shekhar said they don't have much land of their own. They have also only two acres. They manage to do all the work on their own. At times, especially during the harvest, they take the help of other small farmers. And in turn, help them harvest their field. Means uh, they used to take help of others. They can't hire people by paying them money. It is because of they also belongs to poor family. So in place of that, they used to hire people and in turn. They themselves also help them, other people, to harvest their fields. The trader gave me seeds and fertilizers as loan. To pay back this loan, I have to sell my paddy to him at a somewhat lower price than what I would get in the market. So the businessman is to uh, businessman gave him seeds and fertilizers which are required for his crop as a loan. So to pay back this loan, Shekhar have to sell their paddy to him at a somewhat lower price than what they would get in the market. He has sent his agent to remind farmers who have taken loans that they will sell the paddy only to him. So, boys, the thing, uh, it is doing in our state Manipur also, especially in the village area, agriculture, in the agriculture field, they you see the farmers, generally they are poor. So they used to take money from money lender. So, as in when they harvest crops, they used to back them paddy, okay. So he has sent his agent to remind farmers who have taken loans that they will sell the paddy only to him. So in order to remind, they cannot uh, sell their paddy to others as they have taken loan from the money lender. So at the time, that money lender is to send agent. I will probably get 60 bags of paddy from my field. Some of this I will sell to settle alone. The rest will be used in my home. So he said now there is a possibility to get 60 bags of paddy from his field. So out of that 60 bags, some of uh, Rice and the sum of that means paddy bags he will sell to settle the loan, the loan from where he took. There he will give some bags of paddy and the rest he will keep for his own use. But whatever I have will last only eight months, so I need to earn some money. So after that means giving that money lender whatever he left 
they will, will be lasted for eight months or the whole year they can't cover that's why you need to work or you need to earn some money i work in ramalingam's rice mills here i help him collect paddy from other farmers in the neighboring villages so shekhar said he worked in ramalingam's rice mill here he helped him collect paddy from other farmers in the neighboring villages we also have a hybrid cow whose milk we sell in the local milk cooperative this way we get a little extra money for our every need on being that as you have read about very often farmers like shaker need to borrow money to purchase basic things like seed fertilizers and pesticides often they borrow this money from money lenders to run as you have read in the above part of the chapter very often farmers like shaker need to borrow money to purchase basic things such as seeds fertilizers and pesticides often they borrow this money from money lenders so they always used to borrow this money from those person who used to lend money to others as loan if the seeds are not of good quality or pests attack their crops there can be a major crop failure see if the seeds are not good quality seed or if pests attack their crops to ruin the crop the crops can also be ruined if the monsoon does not bring enough rain so i see the crops it can also be for if the monsoon doesn't come okay in time with proper rainfall sufficient rainfall when this happens farmers sometimes are unable to pay back their loans so when it happens so sometimes we find what farmers sometimes they are unable to pay back their loans whatever money they have lent uh, landed from and lord i mean that means uh, money lenders they fail to back them and for the family to survive they may even have to borrow more money soon the loan becomes so large that no matter what they earn they are unable to repay this is when we can say they are caught in debt so you see this is when we can say they are caught in debt the fall in debt that means the sum of money that is owed in recent years this has become a major cause of distress among farmers in some areas this has also resulted in many farmers committing suicide you see if the farmer borrowed money from money lender so if there is failure of his crops he cannot back the loan so as a result farmer they bound to suicide their life so again you got some questions here boy answers have already given you you have to read those answers ramalingam and karuthamma in addition to land ramalingam's family owns a rice mill and a shop selling seeds pesticides etc so you see 
apart from uh, land, Ramalingam's family they have a rice mill and a shop selling seeds, pesticides, etc. For the rice mill, they used some of their own money and also borrowed from the government bank. So for that means uh, to run this rice mill, they used some of their own money and they also borrowed from the government bank. They buy paddy from within the village and from the surrounding villages. The rice that is produced in the mill is sold to traders in nearby town. This gives them a substantial income. See rice that means after getting rice from the rice mill, they should sell in the nearby areas and they earn sufficient amount. Boys, at the left side you can see terrace farming in Nagaland. How that means this uh, terrace cultivation cultivation is practiced. You can see here. Agricultural laborers and farmers in India. In Kalpattu village, there are agricultural laborers like Tulashi and many small farmers like Shekhar and a few big farmers like Ramalingam. In India, nearly two out of every five rural families are agricultural laborer families. As I have already told you boys, here in our India, most of the people of villages, they are cultivators. That's why it says, in India, nearly two out of every five rural families are agricultural laborer families. All of them depend on the work they do on other people's fields to earn a living, to survive their life. They need to do work on other people's fields. Many of them are landless and others may own very small plots of land. Many of them, either they are landless, they are not having any land, and others, they may own very small plots of land from which they get crops it is not sufficient for their use the whole year. In the case of small farmers like Shikhar, their land is barely enough to meet their needs. So in the case of small farmers like Shikhar, their land is barely enough to meet their own needs. In India, 80% of farmers belong to this group. Only 20% of India's farmers are like Ramalingam. These large farmers cultivate most of the land in the villages. So these large farmers they used to cultivate most of the land in the rural area in the villages. A large part of their produce is sold in the market. Many of them have started other business businesses such as shops, money lending, trading, small factories, etc. So many of them they have started other business such as shops, money lending, trading, small factories, etc. We have looked at farming in Kalpattu. Apart from farming, many people in rural areas depend upon collection from the forest, animal husbandry, uh, dairy, produce, fishing, etc. So we have looked at farming in Kalpattu. So beyond that, from farming, many people in rural areas depend upon collection from the forest, animal husbandry, uh, and even animal husbandry, dairy produce, fishing, etc. For example, in some villages in central India, both farming and collection from the forest are important sources of livelihood. So as an example, in some villages in central India, both farming and collection from the forest, both are important sources of their life. Collecting mahua, tendu leaves, honey, to be sold to traders 
is an important source of additional income. So, collecting of this mahua to do it, honey, or forest, or to be sold to traders is an important source of additional income. Similarly, selling milk to the village cooperative society or taking milk to the nearby town may be the main source of livelihood for some families. In the same way, uh, to sell milk to the village cooperative society or taking milk to the nearby town may be the main source of livelihood for some families. Some families, they survive, may, they survive maybe with the following poor uh, such as selling milk okay excellent in the coastal areas we find fishing villages so in the coastal areas side of the bank of the ocean here you will find fishing villages here main occupation is fishing there Let us find out more about the lives of a fishing family by reading about Aruna and Parivelan who live in Pudupet, a village close to Kalap Kalpattu. So let us know about them again here. Let us find out more about the lives of this fishing family. Aruna and Parivelan. Not very far from Kalpatu is the village of Udupet. People here earn their living by fishing. They used to catch fish and sell it in the market. So, this their main occupation. Their houses are close to the sea, and one finds rows of catamarans and nets lying around. At about 7 o'clock in the morning, there is a lot of activity on the beach. This is the time when the catamarans return when their cats and women gather to buy and sell fish. You can see here, boy, here what happened? Uh, they used to catch fish and this is the time in the morning, so that means at 7 o'clock. When the catamarans return, that fish fish catcher, they come back, and women to gather in order to buy and sell fish. My husband Parivelan, my brother, and my brother-in-law returned late today. I was very worried. They got to the sea together. In our catamaran, they say they were caught in a storm. So, sometimes happen, boy. So, storm it blows here. They were caught by that. I have kept aside some fish for the family. I will auction the rest. So, auction means whoever happened to purchase it. Okay. They can purchase it, but they have to save the amount how much they can pay. The money I get from the auction will be divided into four shares, one each for each person who went fishing, and the fourth one is for the equipment equipment they used for catching that fish here is one share for that since we own the catamaran engine and nets we get that share too we have taken a loan from a bank and purchased an engine which is fixed onto the catamaran now they can go far into the sea so that they can get a better catch so that means get more fish the help of that match they can or with the help of that engine they can go so that means she 
the women who buy fish there will carry them in baskets to be sold in nearby villages then there are others like traders who buy for the shops in the town so the traders used to come there and they used to purchase huge quantity okay for the shops in the town i will only finish this auction by noon in the evening my husband and our relatives will untangle and uh, repair our net net early tomorrow morning around 2 am they will set out to see again so tomorrow morning at 2 o'clock they will start their journey again for catching fish again every year for at least about 4 months during the monsoon they cannot go to the sea because this is when the fish breed during this month we survive by borrowing from the trader so at the time of breeding of fish during those days or month we used to survive by borrowing from the trader because of this later on we are forced to sell the fish to that trader and cannot do our auction those lean months are the most difficult last year we suffered a lot because of the tsunami so we mentioned that means last year they suffered because of tsunami the web now again our earthquake is happened in the sea last year rural livelihood people in rural areas earn their living in various ways some work on farms while others earn their living on non farm agriculture so generally in the rural areas in the village areas people earn their living in various ways some of them used to work on farms while others earn their living on non farm work working on farms involves operations such as preparing the land sowing weeding and harvesting of crops so these are the work today on farming okay. we depend on nature for the growth of these crops nature our monsoon timely rainfall or the part of rainfall okay so yes it is necessary here that's why say depend on nature for the growth of these crops hence life revolves around certain seasons people are busy during sowing and harvesting and less so at other times rural people in different regions of the country grow different crops however we do find similarities in their life situations and in the problems that they face she however they find what similarities same in the in their life situations and in the problems that they face how people are able to survive or earn will depend upon the land that they cultivate many depend on these lands for work as laborers most farmers grow crops both for their own requirements and also to sell in the market most of the farmer is to grow crops it is uh, both for their own use as well as to sell in the market some have to sell to traders from whom they have borrowed money for their survival many families need to borrow money for their work or when no work is available there are some families in rural areas which thrive on large acres of land business and other activities there are some families again the rural areas thrive on large acres of land business and other activities however most small farmers agricultural laborers fishing families crafts persons in the villages do not find enough work to keep them employed throughout the year however you see boys most small farmers or agricultural laborers or fishing families 